Welcome back to Dave's Garage. Today we're going to be looking at uh, installing a uh, Garmin Zumo XT on the uh, Kawasaki Versys X300. It's like my case study bike. And we're going to be kind of all over the place today. Um, I'm in multiple locations around my house and I've got different tests set up um, and taking some measurements. What I'm after is I want to add the Zumo to the uh, aux connector, um, you know, combined with other things that are on the bike, to make sure that I'm not overloading and uh, like blowing a fuse on the X300. So what I've got is a uh, iPhone with a wireless charger that's up on on my dash that you've seen in other videos, and I've taken some uh, current measurements because I have a little USB charging station here, which gives me uh, volts, amps, and watts. So this is very, very convenient. So um, the iPhone charging maxes out at 10 watts and when you're doing wireless there's there's some power that's lost to the wireless um, connectivity, you know, to the you know, over, you know, just uh, having the iPhone laying on the charger. And how I know that is because the iPhone will get a little warm while I'm just doing the wireless charging and the wireless charging takes longer. So I took a look at that and it's like a total of 10 watts. Um, not huge, but it, it's significant to keep in mind. Um, using the cable on the iPhone then without the wireless, it's about a little less, about eight, nine, I got like 8.7 watts. But the iPhone does not get hot and it does definitely seem, I don't have it timed, but seems to be charging a lot faster with the um, with the cable as opposed to the wireless. The other uh, item that I have on my uh, Versys X300 is my uh, GoPro uh, Hero 10. So I did some measurements um, with the GoPro just uh, off and charging the, the battery. The GoPro on and it also charges the battery. And then if it's recording, I discovered that it's running the, the um, the power going into the GoPro appears to be running the GoPro, but it's at that time it's not charging the battery. So it's it's at least on the bike, um, or at least actually on my USB station here. But uh, I may look at that again. But I've taken several measurements, and it, it varies between five and eight watts, depending on what's going on with on charging, off charging, recording on. I mean that kind of stuff between five and eight watts so that's where I'm at now I'm down here uh, messing around a little bit with the Zumo and what I've found um, the Zumo doesn't really follow uh, convention I guess I would say the Zumo has two USB uh, connections the one is what they provide a little USB cable um, USB I think it's a micro connector and it's kind of old school at this point in time, but uh, it is what it is. So the micro connector, when you're hooked up the Zumo, it'll power the Zumo up. But under, under any condition, the internal battery of the Zumo is not being charged with that cable. I, I went to, I'll save you the, the grief, but um, I went to great extent to try to figure that out. Uh, when I t first took the Zumo out of the box, it's not obvious. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll just charge it up. I'll leave the cable hooked up to a USB source, and I'll have the Zumo turned off, and, you know, I le left it overnight, and by morning it should be the battery, the internal battery, the Zumo should be topped off. Uh, no change. No no change. Doesn't matter how many hours you let it sit there. So that was weird. So then um, I actually got in touch with Zumo. They did not let me know that's how it works. So... I ended up getting a you know an RMA number. I sent the the Zumo back to them. They sent me a new one, and it's the same thing. So I thought, okay, I need more information. So with that, um, if you go with the back connector, and I'm gonna flip this around. Here's my Zumo Zumo XT. When you're using the back uh, connection that's integrated in with the mount, you know this little disconnect here. This is the only way you can 
charge the Zumo is with this cable that they give you. This cable goes down to a little DC to DC converter. And then I've just got it hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. Uh, just an old supply I've got around here. And it, it, it is kind of bizarre because when I'm wanting to charge the internal battery of this thing, the only way the Zumo will charge the internal battery is with it left on, with the Zumo left on. That's the only time you're going to get charged into the battery. If I turn the Zumo off and leave it to the 12 volts with this harness they gave you, uh, give us, it will not charge the battery with the, with the Zumo off. So it's like only one state you can get into if you want to charge the internal battery. And I'll show you a little trick. This is a super, super neat. You, you push your little finger on that little battery symbol like I'm doing with my thumb. You hold it there for about five seconds. And then it gets into a diagnostic mode. And this is where you show all kinds of detail on what's going on with the battery. That's how I can tell when it's charging and when it's not. So the battery current right here is showing at 60 milliamps, 57 milliamps, 51. That tells me that the battery is almost fully charged, which that's what I would expect. And it is actually charging. If I turn the battery, if I turn the power off, look what happens. Zero milliamps going in. It also gives you the battery voltage, uh, temperatures inside the battery, the temperature of the room, uh, just just all kinds of stuff some of which has no bearing in this a uh, little experiment today turn the power back on and lo and behold the battery current goes to 88 84 this is milliamps and if the battery is pretty low like 80 percent 70 percent or below you'll get up to about 500 milliamps showing up here about a half an amp going into the battery but you have to have the Zumo on to charge the battery. To me, that's just nuts. Oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry. Yeah, down here in the bottom, in order to get out of this diagnostic screen, there's three enunciators that are now blank, but when the first time I powered this up, it actually showed that the first one is exit, then back, and then forward. You don't want to get near those two. This screen is super sensitive. So to get out of this diagnostics, you just go down here where my finger's at, and just get near the screen there's your exit shows just for a second and this will cycle back around and a couple times here and then you're um, back to the normal screen so that that's uh, invaluable um, when it comes to figuring out what's going on with your battery when it's charging when it's not you can you can you smart oh, okay I've got that's connecting to my phone. My phone's connecting to other devices around the house. Sorry. Um, that's how that diagnostics works. Again, you just touch that little battery symbol up there for about five seconds. A little battery symbol right there for about five seconds. And you're into that this diagnostic screen. Um, that may be uh, too much information, but uh, anyways, it is what it is. So this is what uh, a typical little cable that they give you to, to charge it from the the back connector that's just a USB USB micro and your internal battery anyways will not charge with this no matter what you do with the uh, Zumo on or off doesn't matter so 12 volts this brought and actually uh, reading the information on it this actually brings 12 volts down to just a USB 5.1 volts kind of thing so I mean the Zumo is only getting 5 volts to the to the mount you wouldn't think that that'd be behaving any different than five volts to this little connector that's behind this this little rubber duty or rubber cover right there's a little micro usb micro but it is what it is oops i'm getting all over the place here so there's that we're going to go out and look at the uh, verses next and i'm going to take this with me and i've got a whole bunch of stuff going on out there so Bear with me, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're out here in the garage with my Versys X300, and these are the um, these are the items that I've, um, I talk about in the uh, earlier video here. 
This is my wireless for phone. I've already done the uh, wattage uh, testing on that. My GoPro um, 10 lives out here on this mount. So I've already done the uh, testing on that. I've got the left side of the bike um, kind of dressed down here. I've got the, the plastics off and they're, they're all here. It got a little complicated for me because I have to take the aux light off to get the crash bar off to then get the fairing off. And I took that little top one off, even though I, I don't think I'm going to need that, but maybe I will to run a cable. So anyways, that comes off with just six old screws. That comes off with uh, two screws and three of those little plastic rivets. Um, and, you know, of course, the, the fairing has all these little fingers that just plug into these rubber grommets. There's a whole bunch of them. I think there's another hole down here it goes in. So this exposes this. Um, your bike is not going to have this in the way. This is my uh, Delani Sound Bomb Split Air Horn. This is a compressor. And down in here is my horn. Anyways, the uh, connector that we're after here is the aux connector. So I just was able to pull it down low enough to break it apart. And again, this, this connector here is uh, normally just with a plug in it. This is how you buy the bike. You take that little do-nothing cap off, and then you run a genuine OEM Kawasaki aux lights harness across underneath here behind the headlight across the front that's what's coming down to your two lights and that's what plugs in to this harness and then on the other side it plugs into the aux light dashboard switch again all oem one part number you buy the the harness and all that these lights are uh, they're fairly large but these require some sort of crash bar and of course they made up perfectly to the OEM crash bar so what I've done is I've got my little wires here with some pigtails in another video I show the entire breakdown of the aux lights cable the interfacing connectors to everything the switch the um, the lights the harness and you know down here at this end as well for the lights um, you can re reference that as and I'll also put some links on this video so I'm about ready to hook up my uh, meter I got just a inexpensive digital voltmeter I want to find out what the wattage is not on the specs not in the book not in the service manual I want real live what is the wattage that this um, set of lights when they're turned on, how much how much wattage? So I'm going to use a, a 10 amp, uh, basically a 10 amp series shunt. It's not well, it's not a shunt. It's a series to um, test how much power these um, these two lights go. So I'm going to turn the, the uh, camera off for a second, get this all hooked up, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, I've got the lights turned on with the uh, using the dashboard switch. OEM switch. It's got a little pilot light on that tells you're on. There's one light hitting the, uh, the, the background here. The other light's just pointing at the ground. So I just, all I've done is just put this meter in series with the power going to these two lights. And this will be at 12 volts. Actually, probably closer to 13. But it's only consuming about 0.8 amps. About 800 milliamps. So that's that's not a lot of power for as much light as you get out of these. You know, they're pretty pretty bright. And um, I'm pleased with that. I'll do the math, and I'll be back with you in a second. So back with you here. Um, it's kind of creeping up a little bit, but still we're looking at 0.82 amps times, let's call it 13 volts. So that's only about 10 watts. So these um, these two lights are consuming about, well, 10 and a half, 10.66 watts. And you have to add that to the phone. 
and then you have to add that to the GoPro 10 that lives here, the phone that lives here, and then the lights, that's all I've got hooked up. I did have another, uh, I don't know, another something I used to, another older GoPro, but um, I took that off the bike and I've cleaned up the dash a little bit. This is my new Zoom mount, Zoomo mount that I've got hooked up to my uh, massive uh, bracket that I've made here a while back for my custom steer or my custom windshield setup. This this is the solid point of the front of the bike now. So I'm really pleased with that. We're looking at only about 25 watts or so. And let me see, 13 or 25 divided by 25 watts divided by 13 volts. Yeah, a total of about 2 amps, 1.9, 2 amps. So that at, at 13 volts, is that right? Yeah, 25 watts divided by 13 volts. And I think that's where we're at. So we're rough, or let's call it 2 amps. That's really low. Um, I think the fuses are under the seat, and I think the aux is, is either 5 or a 10 amp fuse. I'll have to check that out. That's next. So I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together and um, probably finish wiring it up. I'm going to take my Zumo with my 12-volt um, cable that they use for this this bracket and all I'm going to do is hook these um, you know the 12 volt lines up to what I've got here I'm going to make this all purdy I'm going to make this all um, I'm going to solder the, the connections I'm going to go ahead and put some um, some uh, shrink tubing on this stuff and then I've got to find a place to put all this cable up under there and keep it out of the way of everything else. Um, for your install, it, it may be a little different, but depends on where your Zumo is and depends on what you want to do with it. Um, the, the whole purpose of this exercise was to make sure that, first of all, my current is low. My voltage and, and it, my voltage is 13, my current is low, so my wattage is low. And then I don't have to mess around um, with like an, another auxiliary relay because with my air horn this thing's power hog and you have to go with a uh, an additional relay there's already a, a, a provision here for the aux lights that require you to buy a, a, a you know kawasaki relay and plug it in it's right here where everything else kind of is landing right right up in here that relay does not come with your bike you have to buy the relay. It's real simple. You just, it's a socket. You just plug it in. Then it gives you power to this aux connector here. And then there's two little barrel connectors for power and ground. And then that I have coming up here to an in dash uh, USB charging ports, two dual power port, you know, power ports. And that, that has already been done, you know, like a year ago. So this here just needs to be all cleaned up. Essentially what I've done is I've just parsed the the connector that went to the aux light harness. I'm just going to butter in another cable from my Zumo and purdy this all up, stuff it all under there, zip tie it up and whatever else I got to do. And then I'll have my Zumo um I'll have my Zumo located right here right next to my phone and that's that's the whole purpose of this um, simple but you know nothing is really ever simple it's gonna require another another couple hours or so to make this 100% so I hope you learned something from this I hope you learned something about the Zumo XT's which are real popular the uh, charging of the Zumo XT, especially the internal battery, um, buttering it in, you know, kind of wiring it in to the existing aux cable, doing a little testing to make sure that I'm not going to end up blowing fuses back here under the seat. So this, this is um, 
a little bit of math, a little bit of science, a um, little bit of time and effort, but um, I'm going to turn everything off here before I end up with a dead battery. But uh, this is a pretty neat project. Um, I really kind of went to a little great extent here to mount. This is the, the mount that they give you at the Zumo. I already had bolts going through my huge half-inch thick billet aluminum bracket. So I just extended the bolts down through here to just hook that on. I needed a little spacer. But this comes with a Zumo, this comes with a Zumo, this comes with a Zumo. And, um, and that, is, that is solid. It ain't going anywhere. And um, this here, you know, took a little bit of planning as well. You know, buy some, some hardware. And, but on, on your bike, you can put your Zumo, I don't know. I mean, I've got this little additional, like, handlebar extension up here. The Zumo mount also comes with just a, a U, U um, bolt. They just want you to, you know, run it around your, your handlebars and then just, just clamp it down. I think that's kind of rinky-dink. First of all, it's going to just trash your, your black handlebars. It's just going to start ripping into it. And I chose not to do that. I want something that doesn't, you know, make any changes to the bike. Someday when I want to take this stuff off, I just unbolt everything. And I leave no trace. There, there will be no boogered up handlebars. There will be no, you know, messed up extra holes on the bike. Um, the the uh, connector down here can just be unclicked and just snap it back together. So the, the aux lights are the only thing that, you know, live down here again. If I ever want to take the Zumo off. And um, about the only thing that's a, kind of a bite in the rear end. After I buy the Zumo, go through all this effort, yesterday I get an email because I had to, you know, register my Zumo with, with Garmin. Yesterday I get an email, and guess what? There's a Zumo XT2. So I feel like I'm, I'm already behind the curve. Um, there's a better mousetrap out there. Um, good luck with that. I did, I did some comparison between the two. And it looks like the screen goes from five and a half inch to six inch. And I couldn't see a whole lot of difference beyond that. The resolution of the, dis of the two displays are the same. They claim that the new display is brighter and brighter means it takes more power. So be careful with that one. Um, anytime you make these displays brighter, they start to consume wattage. So just be aware. So back with you, um, when I'm doing the math here, I'm adding the uh, one amp, one amp at 12 volts, which is 12 watts. 12 watts is the lights plus the Zumo. That's really pretty good. And then the eight watts for the GoPro, worst case, uh, 10 watts for the phone, worst case. That all comes to 30 watts, which is about two and a half amps. And we're fused at five amps. So we've got some headroom there. In other words, we're not nearing the edge of that fuse where it's going to heat up over time and blow. Because sometimes fuses don't just go. It's kind of like a slow cooker situation if you're right on the hairy edge. So if I, if I was pushing five amps out of there or close to five amps, it may take an hour, it may take a day, but it will go, it will blow. It'll, it'll heat up and go. So I've done the math on this and done the homework, done all the measurement uh, upstairs there with my USB um, console that tells me the volts, amps, and wattage. And now I need to turn all this stuff off. And what I'm gonna do is purdy all this up and get this stuff, um, this stuff installed so um i'll be back with you shortly well we're really kind of skipping around today i'm in the um, top secret underground laboratory where i uh, get half of my work done for my bike projects but um, just a quick update i've got the two connectors um, that go into the bike now into the aux harness i've got everything nice and clean 
and uh, with some shrink tubing and I'm ready to get this installed in the bike on this end I'm doing the mechanical assembly here of the uh, rear uh, power kind of like co contact plate with the ram mount that um, comes with the Zumo and of course this is Zumo making sure I get that all right it um, it's kind of simple but there's some rubber um, like grommets that are in here I got to make sure that I get the hardware in the right orientation so um, I actually had to read the instructions so anywhere's onward we're uh, back out here in the uh, above ground high-tech lab and I've got everything wired in there's where my Zumo is gonna live my phone will be right next to it <clears throat> excuse me down here you can see the red and black that's the wire I've just got kind of just ran it back and forth in my hand and then did some zip tying and that all turned out well and I've got the other uh, connectors here that go to the harness and back up to the aux or accessory connector on the bike I got that all kind of tucked up still got this dangling and still got a lot of assembly to do but um, I think the construction part of this is now done this is the results got my Zumo XT next to my smartphone and all of that lives above my dashboard my face would be right about here I mean everything is right where I want it kind of centralized up up high and um, I mean theoretically I could reverse these or so whoops well, I just did um, theoretically I could move these around or whatever but it is what it is here we're, we're done and I've got everything back together again sides on lights bars front cowl this little cowl here a couple things I didn't mention when you take this stuff apart they give you some little what they call Christmas trees you know attached to a, a tie wrap so little Christmas trees go through some holes one hole is here in this bracket you got two more holes that live literally in the back side of the crash bar and of course all the nuts bolts everything you have to use Loctite or you'll be replacing it because it's gonna come up missing so that's the end of the end of the end this was kind of a fun project um, start to finish about four hours but I'm sure that if you didn't have the you know amount of hardware that I've got extra on this bike I could have taken maybe a half hour off the time but anyways it's a uh, super success turning everything down off and shutting it down from Dave's garage uh, we'll see you on the next one